Hi everyone, in this video we are going to develop the exercises from 1 to 6 of chapter 6, Supply, Demand and Government Policies. This is a book of Gregory Mankiel, Principle of Economics. The first question says, Lovers of classical music persuade Congress to impose a price of $40 per ticket. Does this policy get more or fewer people to attend classical music concerts? So, we have to clarify if the price ceiling is lower than the equilibrium, it will have an equilibrium on the market. So this is going to be like the, 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 the price is ceiling, which is the maximum price. So in this case, this is the quantities and prices of equilibrium. And with the price ceiling of the $40, assuming which is lower than, the, than P1, we will see here that there is a shortage. So because of the lower price, there is uh, less, there is going to be less tickets that are going to be offered at this price. But at the same time, uh, the demand is going to be higher. There is more disposal from people to demand more. So in this case, it's going to be an imbalance between demand and supply. The demand is higher than supply because of the lower price. It's going to be a shortage. Okay? So this is the quantity offered and this is the quantity demand. Second, the government has decided that the free market price of cheese is too low. A. Suppose the government imposes a binding price floor in the cheese market. Use a supply and demand diagram to show the effect on this policy on the price of cheese and the quantity of cheese sold. Is there a shortage? or surplus of cheese so here we have in the diagram we have the cheese uh, quantities and price so here in one side we have the supply and here we have the demand so here we have the equilibrium which is given by P1 and Q1 so when we have uh, a price floor we have the, the, the minimum price is going to be given by this so remember when the price the price floor is binding is where the minimum price is higher than the equilibrium price. So in this case there's going to be a surplus because the price is higher so just the demand um, so just the demand is going to be lower than the original price because of the higher price. But at the same time at this price the suppliers they are um, incentive they have incentive in order to offer more to the market but at this price is going to be just demanded this quantity QD and this is going to be offered so this is the this is called to surplus okay so the next point says B farmers complain that the price floor has reduced their total revenue is this possible explain so here we have again our chart. So here we have the equilibrium prices. Here we have the condition. So how we can revise or how we can have a look with the revenue. So remember that it could be just if the demand is, is elastic. Remember when demand is elastic and you chart a higher price, your revenues, your revenue is going to decrease otherwise it should be better for them so it means that if the demand is inelastic somewhere the demand curve is inelastic a higher price returns a higher revenue so it depends on on, on, on that so remember the initial revenue is P1 times Q1 which is given by this and afterwards the new revenue is given by the the, the minimum price times QD. So we have to revise if this square is higher than the loss of the revenue here. And again, it is given just if this curve, this part is inelastic. If this change during this, this like part of this curve, this is inelastic. It could be better. So in response.
to farmers' complaints, the government agrees to purchase all of the surplus cheese at the price floor. Compared to the basic price floor, who benefits from this new policy? Who loses? So here we have again the chart, which is given by the two curves, supply and demand. So here we have P1 and Q1. And here we have the, the, the same chart. So what? What, what we, do we have to analyze? So here, the initial revenue is given by this one, okay, P1, Q1. By the new revenue, is going to be given by the minimum price, which is this one, times the quantity D, so all these. But the government agrees to purchase all of the surplus. So it's going, which is the surplus? Is the difference QS minus QD. And it's going to buy, buy at the price floor. This is the price floor. So it's going to be buy at this price. So I just can. This is the, the um, initial revenue. And this is the new revenue. And how we can like see that it's true. This is green. Here we just uh, multiply this by this two. And afterward we can cancel these two. And here we have the new revenue, QS times premium price. So we will see that this is the new revenue and this is the initial revenue. So in this case, who benefits from this new policy? So it's going to be from this policy, it's going to be benefit the farmer's cheese. But who loses? The government, they have to pay this, this part. Third, a recent study found that the demand and supply schedules for frisbees are as follows. So A, what are the equilibrium price and quantity of frisbees? So here we have the table, so the supply schedule. Here it's given the first column, we have uh, the price for the free frisbee from 11 to 6. Here we have the quantity demanded from 1 to 10, which increases at the same time that the price goes down, which is the law of demand. And this data of the supply part, it reflects as well the law of supply. When the price is lower, the quantity offers, they decrease as well. They, they decrease the price. So, with the first question, what are the equilibrium price and quantity of frisbees? So remember that the equilibrium is given when the demand is exactly the same as the supply. This is given when the price is 8. Because when the price is 8, we have the demand and supply, the demand and supply as, as, as quantity equal to 6 million. So big question. Frisbee manufacturers persuade the government that Frisbee production improves scientists, scientists understanding of aerodynamics and thus is important for national security. A concerned Congress votes to impose a price floor $2 above the key living process. What is the new market price? How many frisbees are sold? So here, remember, when this is $2 above, remember that the equilibrium price was 8 plus 2 is going to be 10 so they are just sold 2 millions so even the quantity supply is 12 because of the high price the consumer they are just like they do have the instant the disposition the disposal to buy 2 millions the C point Irate college students march on Washington and demand a reduction in the price of frisbees. An even more concerned Congress votes to repeal the price floor and impose the price ceiling one dollar below the former price floor. What is the new market price? How many frisbees are sold? So here, starting from the eight price, eight dollars, and which one dollar below, we will be here. In the price of seven so here the now the price is seven so there's going to sold um, in this case just three millions okay there is a shortage why is not going to be eight because at this price is so low for the sellers so they're going to offer at this price which is so low just three so because of that even people demand 8 million, 
they just have three which are uh, like available so in this case it's going to be three million okay next point um, suppose the federal government requires beer drinkers to pay a two dollar tax on each case of beer purchased in fact both the federal and state governments impose beer taxes of some sort a draw a supply and demand diagram of the market for beer without the tax show the price paid by consumers the price received by producers and the quantity of beer sold what is the difference between the price paid by consumers and the price received by producers so here we have the the initial the initial position okay uh, don't pay attention to these two dotted lines so here we have the p1 on q1 so here where what is going to be the price which is uh, the first question what is the difference between uh, show the price paid by consumers p1 the price received by consumers p1 and the quantity of beer sold q1 what is the um, what is the difference between the price paid by consumers and the price received by producers zero because the price that they receive or they pay the consumer is the same price that the sellers they sell now draw a supply demand diagram of the market for beer with the tax okay so here we have the tax we have a higher price which is given by p3 this is going to be the price that the consumer they have to pay so again show the price paid by consumer is going to be p3 okay um so here just for summarizing okay p3 is going to be the demand the, the consumers so what what um, what is the price that the sellers are going to receive it's going to be p2 so which is going to be the difference between the both it's going to be p3 minus p2 which is equal to two dollars which is the tax so here i just summarize p1 pr price in this equilibrium price or the initial condition price paid by consumers P in this case is P2, sorry, this is 2 P2, uh, sorry, this is P1, it's okay because the equilibrium P1, uh, price received by producers, Q1 is the quantity of beer sold and the difference zero. In the tax uh, case, we have P3, which is the price paid by consumers, we have the P2, which is the price received by producers, and we have Q2, which is the quantity of beer sold. So which is the tax? It's going to be P3 minus P2, which is equal to 2. So the, the question about the quantities, uh, we see here that the quantity of beer has decreased, or decreased with this tax. Okay, the fifth point, a senator wants to raise uh, tax revenue and make workers better off. Staff member proposes raising the payroll tax paid by firms and using part of the extra revenue to reduce the payroll tax paid by workers. Would this accomplish the senator's goal? Well, basically, no. Because as we see in previous exercises or in previous cases, tax is paid for the demand and supply. In this case, the demand is not firms, it's firms and supply workers. So both they have to pay the tax. Okay, so this is not going to be the case. Uh, the workers are going to be better off because they have to pay in some way this tax. Six, if the government places a 500 tax on luxury cars, will the price paid by consumers uh, rise by more than 500, less than 500, or exactly 500? Explain. So it could be. Uh, I mean, it would depend on the elasticity of demand. We have like two basic cases. It would be one, where it's, it's the most possible. I mean, the more likely it's going to be like that. Because consumer, consumers, they have to pay less than 500 because it's divided with the suppliers. Okay? But it could be another case where the consumer, they have to pay completely the 500 if the elasticity of supply is perfectly inelastic. Let's see. Here we have the initial case where we have the Q1, P1, the equilibrium prices in the initial condition. There is uh, an taxes of P3 where this is 500. This is the, 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 the tax. So the consumers, they have to pay P3, but uh, the suppliers, the sellers, they are just going to receive this P2. 
So these difference is going to be given by 500. So if we have P3 minus P2, if you see, if you realize the original price was P1, so that you have to pay more P3 minus P1. But the sellers, they have to assume the other part of the tax. Which is going to be the other case. This is a perfectly inelastic supply. So here we have the demand, the initial condition, the equilibrium. And here we have the price, so which is the difference, 500. If you see here, the, the, in this case, the, the sellers, they're just going to receive this part. It's going to receive just P1 and these quantities. But the consumers, they, have, they are charged with uh, tax. And because of the elasticity of demand, they have to pay all, all the tax. Okay, I hope it has worked. Have a great success with economics and see you the next video. Bye bye.